So why would I speak on issues I do not understand? Why would you talk about something that you do not understand? Hey guys, it's Daniel, licensed therapist. So Andrew Tate recently went on an interview with Piers Morgan and naturally it was very entertaining. And in one segment, he talked about men being overly emotional. So naturally I had to react to it. Now, let me clear the air here. <clears throat> I don't dislike Andrew at all. I make videos about things that I am interested in. So me making a reaction video on him just means I find him interesting. I think that he is really funny and quick witted and he may be the most talented person at discord that I've ever seen. I think he is genuinely trying to help people and is overall a force for good. I think he is intelligent and knows a lot about certain things, but there are areas where I believe he thinks he knows more than he does. I made a couple reaction videos about him and his thoughts on therapy and I was forced to lay the rhetorical smackdown on him. He took two L's from yours truly. Will he take a third? Let's go into the clip and find out. Dame Sheila Hancock says we've become too over emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Has well, she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. So has society become overly emotional? Well, first of all, we need to get straight a few definitions because Andrew is a little all over the place. There are three things we're talking about here, and this comes from the well-established cognitive behavior theory. We have thoughts, we have emotions, and we have actions. <clears throat> and here Andrew is talking about actions, not emotions. So when people are not overly expressive of emotions, but rather they are acting impulsive, impulsively on emotions, then, I agree with him. All feelings are valid because we cannot help how we feel. However, we are responsible for our actions and it does not mean that we act according to them. What I believe Andrew is saying is that we need to learn to regulate our emotions because if we go up the cognitive behavioral model, we find the true origin of our feelings, which are our thoughts and not all thoughts are good, are valid, rational, or helpful. So, so far, I agree. Let's continue. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not gonna hurt people. He's gonna sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's gonna be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're gonna find a dangerous man. Here, Andrew clears it up for me a little bit because he says, act on impulse and emotion. So yes, I totally agree here. He's right. Us human beings have a lot of negative impulses. If you see any kid, they are inherently selfish. And we grow up to learn to regulate those impulses so that we can fit in to society and ultimately develop good relationships. But I do disagree here that it is a lack of impulse control that creates a school shooter and a rapist. And this is where I believe that Andrews may be talking from a place of half ignorance. School shooters and rapists are doing the most violent crimes, which are caused by the most extreme mental health conditions. I feel like acting on impulse at the worst kind of turns you into a child, a selfish whiny baby. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. And here I, totally disagree. And I know what he's talking about. He's talking in generalities. He's not saying to never talk about your feelings, but overall he's describing invalidating your feelings. 
which is never a good thing. Because like I said, you can't help how you feel. I agree that men should not cry all the time. But if we neglect our feelings too much, there is a price to pay. In fact, I believe that a lot of school shooters and rapists, the people he is talking about here, are people who have a lot of pent up emotions that if they were able to process in a healthy way, then maybe they would not resort to doing those violent things. But let's continue. Absolutely not wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're gonna feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. Okay, so I agree 100% that we need to teach men that it is very, very hard that we are going to feel very bad sometimes and that we do in a sense need to suck it up and we do need to perform. And I totally agree that it would serve people if they do not blame other people. But the word <clears throat> stoicism gives me hesitation. I do not believe that we need to express all of our emotions all the time and that if we do that, that it's not good. But I also believe that there is a time and place to express our emotions and that if we don't express, process and feel our emotions, then it is also not good. And having worked with a lot of men who have been trained in their lives to shove all the emotions down to the extent that they don't even know that they're aware of their emotions, I can tell you that it doesn't work. Emotions don't just go away if you ignore them or you bottle them up. And if you do that for too long, they come pouring out like a dam breaking in ways that are unintended. And <clears throat> In that case, you actually become the overly emotional man. So in an ironic way, you become the very thing you're trying to avoid. So what's the path forward here? I agree that men need to be strong, that we need to regulate our emotions and not act impulsively, just like Andrew was saying. But I want to add that we need to acknowledge our emotions. We need to process them. And we need to feel them. And if we can do that, I believe that we'll be able to be the strong men that Andrew is talking about. If you have anything you want me to react to, please leave it in the comments below. Hey, it's free. So just do it. I'm always looking for interesting things to analyze. Thank you so much for watching, you amazing person. I'll see you next time.